Welcome back, Captains. We're down here at the Dunlop and Boat Ramp, and I figured I'd give you the struggle bus of the week here. Now, you can see the one up there on the bow of the boat in that lace-up bathing suit. She's in a pretty bad position. And look at that. There's a rocket launch today. 10 a.m. Well, in case you guys are wondering, the tide's slack, there ain't no really no wind, and it's just drizzling just a little bit. It's all motor control here. Well, there's the handoff. You'd think that'd be it, but hey. This is credit card cap. Now, I talked to the owner of the boat, and in fact, he does have a hole in the pontoon now, and he's got to get that welded. I think the baby in the back is okay. That stroller flung forward real good right there. Now, I don't understand this line over here. Watch this guy in the green shorts. He's going to tie that thing real tight and short, and it takes two of them to do it. A green shorts moves over, and I'm surprised the captain's even given any directions. I wouldn't listen to that guy in the gray shirt if he told me there was a $100 bill on the ground over there. Now, guy in the black shorts over there spins that line around there about 8, 10 times on that cleat. And she comes over and undoes everything he did. Well, now that that chaos is over, here we go. We got another one over here. I'm going to give you all the credit card captain tip of the week. The guy in the orange shirt, he's a little bit too high up to jump, but he's thinking about it. Now right there is one of those dangerous jumps that you could have. You hold that line too short, you jump off the boat, and it'll snatch you right back head first back into that water. He's still thinking about doing that jump. Look at him. The easiest thing to do is just take that line and lasso it down on that cleat and pull it in. Most everybody uses about a hundred foot of dock line anyway. Well the river monster's got this one here. I don't know if you know about docks and boats, but there's a little river monster that lives down there and he'll grab a hold of your trailer and keep that thing on the water. And the only way to get it out is actually lift it. What happens is when everybody power loads, it washes out the back of the ramp and then there's a ledge at the end of the dock right about there. And if you drive your trailer too far back, then your trailer's going to be stuck. And that's when the river gremlin will get you. All right, here it is. Now I'm surprised he didn't rip his axles off. He's in four low right now trying to pull out of this thing. Wait till you see the pontoon boat that that thing goes on. Everybody hops into play to see what they can do to come out of here and help them out. And like I said, the easiest thing to do is just lift this thing off the ledge over there and he can then pull out. This is a triple axle. 
about three weeks ago, someone did this same thing. They didn't have anybody help them lift it up, and they broke their axle right off. Watch how easy it is. There it is. Just lift it up. Four of us in there and then done. Now look at that pontoon boat. I reckon that thing's got about 120k into it. Now let's take a look at this thing when he pulls it out of the water up here. I tell you what, I can't believe I'm looking at about what a house used to cost. Not 100k for that truck, 120k for that boat right there. Well, I'd like to share some of the good stuff as well. This young captain comes in here and watch how nice and easy he takes it. Dad's over there on the left, just to make sure nothing happens. Cuts the engine over, throws it in reverse, and look at that. That's how it's supposed to be done. Well, that bird's up there wondering why you're dropping that thing down three inches. I guess three inches makes a difference. Well, this confused captain thought he was going to come over here and just skip the line. This guy's waiting to back up. I think he realizes what he did there. Nice clean straight back in right there. The yellow boat in the background drops someone off to go get the trailer and they go into holding position. I don't know what they were going to do before but it looks like they're trying to get the boat ready. Well, the storm's been rolling in every day out here at the boat ramp. And even though those storms come in like that, no one cares. They just get out there on the ward and they go. Until the lightning strikes, that's when you see the panic. Now, I'm not sure what this guy in the back little boat's doing.
my guy on the jet ski is one and two. I guess he's gonna just move over. There's never any consideration down here. The Port Orange boat ramp's known for its fights too. Well, they all are. So the guy with the personal watercraft, he changes up the position here and slides this thing down while the other guy blocks the ramp. Instead of going to get in his trailer, he sits here. It's all right. I don't know. Some people are a little bit nicer than I am. I would have just backed it in and made them move. Inch by inch, we'll get you there. Well, the person watercraft guys, they get themselves in the water here. That guy's still blocking the ramp on the right, and that's what you do when you're a credit card captain. Thankfully, because of the weather today, it's not too busy. So this one might be able to slide. But a guy on the jet ski starts riding the bull. Everybody watches him, see how long he can hold on for. Now I told you, y'all can get some of that bunk lube that's in the description. And if it's too much money for you, I'll have the spit on it version coming in soon. Well, that bad boy finally breaks loose and he finds out that these things don't turn when you don't have no throttle. Yeah, a little beach in there don't hurt nothing. Spray paint it when you get home. Every time it hits the gas, the back of that ski hits the ground. I mean, he is going to get wet today. I would have just pushed it out manually and got on it just like I did if I fell off. Oh well. Well, after the end of the day here, I decided to take the boat out and see what happened here. It was a busy weekend, and I found these two guys over here stuck on the shoal. Now, there's nothing I could do. My boat's smaller than that one, and if I get over there, I'm going to be stuck too. It's real shallow, so the only thing they got to do is wait for the tide. Now, I know that boat's got some electronics on it and probably has some depth finder and all that other stuff, but they enjoyed a sunset for about another four and a half, five hours, and I'll see you guys again soon.